good afternoon. It's now the 7th of June at 5.30 in the afternoon, 2020. It's been a few days, oh, pardon me. It's been a few days since my last update. Um, the council came and collected the rubbish on Monday at nine, as they agreed, but then I had no contact with the council all week. Despite Duncan Angus promising that I would have some communication, a letter or something, and a meeting was supposed to be planned for last Thursday, or the Thursday before the rubbish was collected. Well, I've had nothing, and no one can explain it. Um, the only voice contact I've had anyone was with Mary. For instance, I called her for three minutes today just to hear another human because I'm going slowly out of my mind. I've got a bar full of rubbish again. I've had offers of help again, but the trouble is offering to help isn't resolving the problem because I don't know if it's going to be a regular thing. I'm basically imprisoned here. I keep saying this and no one listens. I am imprisoned by Waltham Forest Council for their lack of action against my neighbours for basically abusing me and abusing the regulations. And they sit on their arse and do nothing. I am fed up. I really don't know who to turn to because no one seems to be doing anything. Spoke to Cap, well, a message. I, when I say speak, I don't actually speak with many people. It actually refers to even though I don't describe it as speaking, it refers to messaging. Because that's all my communication is lately, messaging. And hearing the word later. I fucking hate the word later. It is totally meaningless to me. Later is what? Five minutes, two hours, the next day, next year, in the next life. Later means fuck all to me. Sorry for the language, but I'm fucking pissed off with it all. We'll call you later. We'll contact you later. We'll message you later. Means fuck all. If you have an intention of doing something at an alternate time, you tell someone what time you're going to do it. Later should be banned. It should be tomorrow, this afternoon, Wednesday, on your birthday. Never. Later is a fucking meaningless word that has no significance for anyone. And generally, I find it is used by people that don't fucking want to talk to you. Oh, I'll call you later. Yeah. The only people that use the word later and it is actually significant is when they say, I'll meet you down the old Vic later. Or the Queen Vic later in EastEnders. Oh, I'm so angry. I had... An email from I was going to look at my phone, but I'm recording this on my phone. I had an email from SNT Sue asking if I was still having problems with my neighbours. She's tried calling me, but because my phone blocks private numbers, I'm sick of explaining to everyone why the fuck I block private numbers. I'm not the one trying to hide my identity when they're contacting me. I shouldn't have to explain, it should be everyone else. If you're hiding your identity, you have to explain why you're hiding your identity. I'm fucking, I am so fucking angry. People just hide their number and get away with it. Public bodies, for fuck's sake, they're public bodies. Why have they got private numbers? No one in eight years has explained that one to me. Apart from the fucking obvious, oh, it's the phone system. I fucking knew it was the phone system. Why have you set your phone system up like that? You're a public body full of public servants. Explain yourselves, council. 
government departments, you know, hospitals, etc., etc. Why are all these people private numbers? Well, because it's possible we can hide our number. Explain yourselves. Why are you hiding your number? Even the police. I would go as far as the police. Because I was thinking about this earlier. And people that don't answer the number are the people the police need to talk to. And so they're not going to pick the number up whether it's private or not. If it comes up saying police, they're still not going to answer you. So, come on, let all public bodies, including the police, ambulance, fire brigade, council departments, local authorities, GPs, etc, etc, deprivatise your fucking numbers. Because I'm fucking sick of it. I'm fucking sick of explaining myself to you people. I am not the one hiding my number. Let's put it this way. To me, I've explained this time and time again, but to me, hiding your number is like knocking on my door wearing a mask. I wouldn't fucking answer the door if you came wearing a mask. So why should I answer the phone if you hide your number? Yes, I'm fucking angry because I've had years of this and no one's fucking listened. John Cruddus, ignored. Ian Duncan Smith, ignored. Barkin and Dagnam Council, ignored. Waltham Forest Council, ignored. Ofcom, not quite ignored, but they say it's up to the person running the board. That's because the government, when they put these ombudsmen in, back in the 80s and 90s, when they set up the ombudsmen, they didn't give them any power. So... Ofcom, um, the local government ombudsman, or the local government and social care ombudsman as it is now, etc, etc, etc. They can make recommendations, they can find in your favour, but no action will be taken for any public body where the recommendation has gone against them and they don't uphold it. There's no power. You have to find a solicitor and take them to court. And then you're hoping that you win and you're hoping some penalties get done. Shouldn't have to be that way. The law is all wrong. I am fed up of trying to get things done. I've got rubbish in my bathroom because Waltham Forest Council are a bunch of time-wasting assholes and they won't call me on a non-private number. So nothing gets done and... I have to put myself through anxiety and panic attacks just to get anything done round here. Why are councils and local government and national government allowed to hide their number? Someone answer the fucking question. I'm sick of having no contact with anyone because they called on private numbers. What the fuck do you people think you are? You're not special. You're public fucking servants. Have a look at what the title says. Public servant. You're here to serve the public. Not to hide your fucking identity. I am sick and tired of explaining this week after fucking week. I really don't know. I'm going out of my fucking head because no one's fucking listening. I've had to put Duncan Angus on a block because he lied to me and he broke my trust. He told me last week, in fact, Friday last week, that they was coming on Monday to pick the rubbish up and I would be receiving a letter and a meeting. And he would send me a confirmation text. I didn't get a text. They did turn up. They moaned about picking my rubbish up. I could hear them without my camera. I could hear the fuckers outside my door moaning about the amount of rubbish. 
I'll try and put an insert picture into what's in my bathroom currently after six days. This isn't even a full week. In fact, that's only five days because that was taken on Saturday morning. It's now Sunday afternoon. So I might put this one up as a um, supplement to my normal diary because it's not really consistent with everything else. And it's about time you fuckers actually saw the misery that you put me through. And why? I want some fucking answers. Why do you have private numbers? Why don't you deprivatise your number is more exactly the point. You're a public body, why don't you have a public number? Answer the question. Eason, Martin Eason, you haven't replied to me at all in 13 weeks. My counsellors haven't replied to me, haven't contacted me in 13 weeks. You all have to explain yourselves. Karen Bellamy is the only one that's actually taken an interest and even she's fed up of it now. And I'm fed up of all you people that sit on your ass and don't do fuck all and pretend to contact me. Yes, pretend to contact me by ticking the box saying you've called and you couldn't get through. That is not good enough. Ticking a box, can't get through, is not good enough. In my day, when I was trained in civil service public um, support, if you can't get through on the phone, you send them an email, you write them a letter, you knock on the fucking door. No, the only ones that do that are the local police. The council can't be bothered. Okay, they've got the excuse of COVID-19, but this has been going on for two fucking years. COVID-19 has only been going on for three months. I'm fucking sick of everyone finding an excuse not to support me. I want to get out of my flat sometime. I shouldn't have to be unlawfully imprisoned by a local authority. Yes, I'm fucking angry, because all you cunts are sitting on your ass and you're not doing anything. Move yourselves. If you say you're going to contact me, if you say you're going to send me a confirmation, do it. Don't leave it till next week and apologise after six days. I'm fucking sick of this now. This is pathetic. All I want is for the council to enforce the bloody tenancy agreement. Is that too much to fucking ask? My health is rapidly deteriorating, physically and mentally. And no one will answer my questions. I emailed Waltham Forest Direct a few days ago about reporting a neighbour for a dog that she shouldn't have. And they wanted an address. So I replied back to them saying, so how do I get an address of someone that lives in a secure block of flats? And they did not respond. Sorry, not good enough. If you have a policy saying you need an address, a full address, an exact address, you have to be able to explain how you're supposed to get an address for someone that lives in a secure block of flats. And when I say secure, I mean you can't just walk in and follow them. One, you're putting yourself at threat. And two, you need a fob or a code to get into the block. So on estates, basically you have no right of recourse because you can't report anyone because you can't ever know their address. So everyone on fucking estates gets away with anything they want because the council don't want to support you because they have a policy that prevents you from reporting anything. 
Work that one out. Ian Duncan Smith, explain that one to me. Come on. Martin Eason, explain it to me, son. I'm fed up of you people making policies so you can sit on your ass and do nothing. About fucking time you did something for me for a change. The last time I had a repair come down here, two years ago, was underneath the bath. There was a leak and number five kept complaining. And the first thing this bloke does is he starts stripping the box trunking behind the toilet. It's under the fucking bath, you knob. Why are you stripping the trunking? And I've still got broken trunking to this day. Because no one follows up. My complaints are not being processed. My emails are not being actioned. My counsellors are ignoring me. I'm getting nothing via email from Ian Duncan Smith. I have to ring him up. No one calls me. I've been waiting four weeks for my GP to call me back. Four fucking weeks and that's my doctor. And now every fucking day I get screaming kids out the back. Shouting and screaming because their parents are too fucking lazy to take them over the park. I haven't got a problem with kids playing, but outside my flat is not a playground. There are playgrounds open, there are parks open. Go to a park. That's what they're there for. And all these people moved in after I moved in. It was nice until these people moved in. The council still haven't done anything about the fire escape. There's still stuff down there. The fire doors are still faulty. What more do I have to do? I have literally contacted everyone that Shelter said I should have. Before Shelter even told me. I am sick of this. I'm going to put this one out tonight. It's going to be out of sequence because all my other videos are on schedules. But it's going to be out of sequence because I think this one is more important. Because someone needs to do something. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's screaming kids out there now. I should not have to go through this stress. Anyway, I don't, I don't even know when I started. Was it half five? It's 20, 10 to 6 now. I can't sleep. I'm eating junk. I'm gradually going out with my. And come the revolution, in two or three weeks' time, especially after the last couple of weekends, we're going to start hitting big numbers on the coronavirus again. They think it's all over. It's under 150 on average. But it's going to be up to four, five, six hundred again by the end of the month. And then we'll be back in lockdown. And then it'll go up even more. Because people aren't going to expect lockdown. Not second time around. They barely respected it first time around. So they'll see we'll come out of lockdown and then they'll be, well, if we were okay yesterday, why aren't we okay today? People are idiots. We all know that a lot of people are idiots. So why is it the government just don't want to tell people? They advise people. Advice isn't good enough. You have to enforce it and you have to be seen to be enforcing it. I've yet to see anyone on this estate, apart from immediately after the police were given the powers, 11 o'clock that very same night, there was a car pulled up with a number plate that came from Manchester or something. They literally pulled up outside my flat. I could hear what the police were saying. 
And ever since then, they had an explanation of, you know, well, this is my friend's car or whatever, blah, blah, blah. They were out there a while. And the police have got the idea, well, you can't just go by where the car was registered. Why not? It's supposed to be registered to your address. If it's registered in Manchester and you find it in London and you're not supposed to go more than a mile, why is that not good enough? Unless they've literally just moved to London. No, sorry. If they're going to do a second lockdown, when they do a second lockdown, it needs to be rigidly enforced. None of this, oh, well, we want, we advise people to do this. We advise people to do that. No, it's like tomorrow, face masks start on the London transport. Let's see how many people, I mean, I can't, because I can't get out. But there will definitely be news cameras. You'll be on the news tomorrow. Let's see how many people get on the tubes without face masks. Get on buses without face masks. Let's see how full the buses are. It's up to the driver's discretion on how many people he puts in above the 20 they're supposed to have on double-deckers or 10 on a single-decker. Sorry. I don't know. It's all... Well, you know. Anyway, I think this is going to be 50... So it is going to be out of sequence because I think the current number is 42, maybe. can't remember. So there we are. Let's get this one up and done and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Like, don't like, who cares? It don't affect me. If you've got any comments, put them in the um, comments. Or email me directly if I've touched the nerve. I'll try and get this link sent out to everyone that I've mentioned because it's about time you people actually saw the misery you put me through. And it's about time that you people, the ones that I'm going to send this link to via email, you people actually explain yourselves. You are all public servants. I want answers. Not asking for money. I'm not asking for gold-plated taps and a marble bathroom. I just want answers. You know the questions. Why haven't I got any answers? Anyway, good evening. I'll speak to you tomorrow, hopefully.